Chapter 54 The Third Level When Lydia woke in the morning, Xander was sitting upright on the end of her sleeping bag. He had his back to her. Hey, Xander, she whispered. Are you okay? Aye, well, I'm unharmed, he replied without turning. I am more than a little ashamed of myself, though. What happened? Lydia asked. He turned to face her. She lifted the flap of her sleeping bag to let him in. He got in with her and she put her arms around him. I joined Dean and Quinn for their card game, he said. Dean's a quick learner. He relieved Enkmish of most of his money. Then let him win it all back again. He blamed beginner's luck. Anyway, during all this, they spilt a certain amount of wine on the table. I lapped up rather too much of it before going on patrol. Quinn was right. The cats here are uncouth, a little more than wild cats. Don't get me wrong. Togwarts, some of my favoured acquaintances, are Scottish wild cats. But the Shikikan cats are the ugliest I've ever known. Worse still, they refuse to acknowledge my superiority. Xander fell silent. Lydia stroked him and rubbed his cheeks. Normally he would have purred. I got carried away. There are fewer cats in the city this morning. These locals don't have the sense to back down, and they are outclassed. One thing led to another. You know how it goes. Lydia sighed. We always knew we would have to fight when we came to the anti-world. Aye, Santa conceded. But it was unnecessary. I contributed nothing to the quest. It happened because of the drink and my lack of self-discipline. Would you have backed down without the wine? Lydia asked. Not as such, he admitted. But I would have hurt a couple and had an excuse to leave. What happened? I killed one, he said. Then three more attacked at once. Once they were dead, eight more attacked. I dispatched three others before the rest got the message and fled. Someone could notice seven dead cats, Lydia noted. After I had calmed down, I hid the remains, he intoned. Still eight at once, Lydia said, and wild cats too. Unnecessary, Xander judged. I knew I could do that. It would have been better to practice avoiding conflict. I meant, how can you fight so many at once? Lydia queried. I'm sure you will have an opportunity to witness my technique before this quest is complete, he said. They lay quiet for a while. Shona stirred and sat up. Hi, Lids, Xander, she whispered, noticing they were awake. Lids? Lydia sat up and took her hairbrush from her rucksack. She leaned over and handed it to Shona. Thanks, babe, Shona said, brushing her golden hair. How are you, Lord Zander? I am divine, as always, my handmaiden, he joked. Shona giggled. Don't say that to Christy. That's the only thing I've ever seen make a loser cool. Ah, oh, I'll leave it to Dean to make that mistake, Zander assured her. How was Dean last night? she asked. He did well at cards and... Gallantly lost all he won, Xander replied. Though you may find him a wee bit subdued this morning, after last night's wine. I warned him not to get drunk, Lydia growled. The companions all gathered in the girls' room to take breakfast and discuss their plans. Right here, lot, Lydia began. Freddy has consulted the mandala and got the vaguest response we've seen. There is something... It's somewhere not too far, and all he saw was a cloudy white ball. I'm going to go with our current guess that it's in the library, and that there may be magic around it that's keeping us from seeing clearly. So we carry on to the citadel, and look for a way into this library. Over to you, Quinn. I have found from our friend Enkemish that we should have no problem getting into the third level. The citadel itself, however, is restricted to only scholars and dignitaries. We were passed for scholars, surely, Shona suggested. How do they determine who's qualified? Oddie asked. If they do not recognise you, they will pose riddles for you to solve, Quinn explained. Several of the team laughed. Most of us are Ravenclaws, Jimmy said. Riddles are our daily bread. I am told that their riddles can be fiendish, Quinn warned. We can only try and see how it turns out, Oddie said. 
If we fail, we'll have to replan. Come on, Oddy, Jimmy scoffed. Do you honestly think they could come up with a riddle we can't solve? If their riddles involve things or concepts we don't have in our world, we could be stuck, Oddie explained. As he said, we can only try, Lydia ruled. Come on, let's start. Sander, you must say goodbye to our Stamalos. It'll make her year. She adores you, Sander, Christy observed. She's out a lot, then, Dean chipped in. From what he's saying in the bar, he's got his eye on someone else. What? Sander said. What did I say last night? You asked me if it was wrong that you found Lavender Brown attractive, Dean said. Why, hey, she's a good-looking woman, Christy noted. Woman, Zander said in horror. I don't fancy her as a woman. I meant as a werewolf. That is a bit wrong, Zander, Fiona said. Cats aren't supposed to like dogs. Anyway, we have our reservations about dogs. They like self-respect. They're servile, deferring to lower life forms such as humans. Lavender is nobody's lapdog. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Zant, Dean warned. I think there was something brewing between her and Stefano. Aye, well, good luck to him, Sander said, dismissing the subject. May the good Lord bless them. And by the good Lord, I mean me, of course. After thanking Ostamolos and bestowing his divine blessing on her, Sander joined the other companions and set off for the third level. He returned to his hiding place in Lydia's rucksack. They found the guards at the gate to the final tier were a step up from the second level guards. They wore burnished breastplates and coloured livery, trimmed with gold thread. Again the guards knew Quinn. Despite this, they were prepared to let the students in, as they looked much more respectable than the wanderer. The third level was less steep than the second. Here the streets and alleys existed between the buildings rather than the buildings lining the streets. The buildings here were impressive, formal and monumental. There were villas for the rich and those who ruled, and offices for those who administered and tallied. Elsewhere there were courts for citizens who transgressed, and forums for orators who digressed. In the centre, and above all else, there was the citadel. The stone of the citadel differed from that used in all the other edifices. It was dark, glassy, igneous rock, which sparkled in the sunlight. Above the forbidding and foreboding walls of the citadel stood a tower, like a gargantuan finger pointing an accusation at the sky. At Quinn's suggestion, they made their way around the third level as outland visitors would. They didn't find this difficult, as there were plenty of sights to make them gulp. All the time they moved closer to the citadel. Eventually, they arrived before the great arched doorway that was the entrance to the Citadel Palace. The Citadel guards were taller than anyone they had seen since entering the city. They were handsome, dark-skinned and broad-shouldered. The guards wore gold-threaded cloaks over shimmering silver chain mail as fine and supple as cloth. They each carried two swords, one long, one shorter. Halt and state your business in the Citadel, one guard called out as they approached. I bring you scholars from lands afar, Quinn announced. They come to marvel at your citadel, and to share knowledge with the scholars of Shakika. How nice for them, Gard scoffed. What knowledge have they which would interest our scholars? We do not admit just any band of wanderers, however pretty they might be. The guard glanced at Shona, and she blushed. It meant me, whispered Jimmy, who was standing behind her. She trod on his foot. We have an arrangement with Major Caltan, Quinn ventured. He would be glad to see us, if you grant us entry. Major Caltan? the second guard asked. He would indeed be glad to see you. The Major died two weeks ago. Quinn's shoulders sagged. Ah, oh, we have been about our travels longer than that. I am saddened to hear of Caltan's death and the Citadel's loss. We'd express our sorrow to his fellow scholars if we could but see them. I believe they too would be interested in sharing the knowledge we bring. What have you of interest, I ask again? The first guard asked. We carry you with us, Lord of the Mow, Lydia interrupted before Quinn could speak. 
Majors Carlton expressed great interest in meeting him. The first scout snorted. A cat? That is all you bring? Where is the beast? The second guard demanded, casting his eyes over the group. Lydia slipped her rucksack from her shoulder. She placed it on the paved floor. Tipping it on its side, she opened the top. Sander strutted out onto the stone paving, sat and looked up at the guards. An impressive creature indeed, the first guard confessed. I have seen none so fine. But would a beauteous cat interest the scholars? The question is, would I be interested in what they had to say, surely? Sanda asked in return. The guards were either highly disciplined, or they had encountered many other wonders during their time in the citadel. They did not flinch. If the Lord of the Mao would enter the citadel, the first guard said, it is our duty to ask three riddles to test your scholarly credentials. We're ready, Lydia informed him. The Lord Mao should answer the riddles. The second guard said. We made no claim that Lord Mao was a scholar, the deer protested. We made no promise we would grant you entry to the citadel, the guard retorted. The members of the group of supposed scholars shuffled and muttered. Pause your riddles, good guardsmen, Sander sighed. And please you be quick about it. We would be about our scholarly pursuits. The guards could not suppress a smile and a raised eyebrow. Very well the first guard said. I weigh naught, but you can see me. Place me in a bucket and I make it lighter. What is my name? The Ravenclaws in the group smiled. They were sure Zander would have heard this one before. Freddy and Christy looked puzzled. I would name that a hole, Zander answered. The guards nodded and looked at each other impressed. I speak without a mouth, here without ears, said the second guard. You cannot see me, but you have only to call for me. What am I? Sander stood, walked round in a circle, then sat on his haunches. What you are is a highly respected guardian of the citadel, said Sander. Several of the group gasped. However, Sander continued, the answer to your riddle is an echo, I believe. Dean chuckled with relief. The other sighed. The second guard smiled. You are correct, Lord Mao, on both counts. I know, Zander assured him. I must ask you the third riddle, Lord Mao, said the first guard. My apologies. Not that I doubt your credentials, but pose three riddles is our duty. I understand, said Zander. I would expect such diligence from my staff, if only they were to offer. Hey, Jimmy protested. The guards laughed. Lydia marvelled at Xander's skill in winning them over. One more correct answer, and the guards would be sure to let them in. The final riddle is this, the first guard said. If you are given one, you will have more or none. Xander stood again and paced to left and right several times. He stopped, raised his tail and shook it. Then he paced some more. He sat. He stood. Time passed. I do not wish to rush you, Lord Mao, the guard began. You did not wish, Zander replied. But in the spirit of the answer, that is your choice. Both guards laughed. <laughs> I believe you'd toy with us, Lord Mao, the second guard observed. Pass, Lord Mao and attendees, said the first. The Lord is clearly a scholar. Hey, thank you, guardians of the citadel, Zander said with a bow. Please you, do not speak of me outside the citadel until we have left Chakika. I would not wish to draw a crowd. Who would believe us? the second guard asked. Xander bowed his head to the guards. He turned to face Lydia. My carriage, please you, high priestess, he commanded. Lydia knelt to open the rucksack. Xander sauntered in. Pass, scholars, said the first guard. Do you require a guide within the citadel? That will not be necessary, Quinn soothed. I am acquainted with the scholars' quarters. The guards stepped aside, and the band of outland scholars passed through into the citadel building. 